So with all this crazy world and advancement in AI, there comes a need for people to have other people testing those tools. And you witness every day there's a new tool, every day there's a new language model, every day there's a new tool which does something for you. Now, what they need, these companies, these software developers, what they need, well, they still need people to test those products. And it opens up the opportunity for us to get paid for it. And that is what Stellar does in a nutshell. This website pays you for testing AI tools, which are in the making. I'm not affiliating with them. You can just Google for it like this. It is Stellar AI, and it's going to be the first result here. So it is joinstellar.ai. And this is the homepage of it. So as you can see right out of the bat, contribute to improving AI earn $25 plus per hour, even more as possible. I've tested it. And of course, you can do it remotely wherever you live, right? And on the right hand side here, you can see some of the niches, right? Some of the skills that you might need in order to complete these jobs. But of course, you don't have to have all of them. In fact, you don't even have to be like huge expert in some of these things. You will just test and you will rate the responses from these models, right? So that's what you're going to do in a nutshell. So down there, you can see that what I've just said, diverse skills and knowledge. So there's most certainly going to be an area in which you can excel. And there's certainly going to be a niche for you on the website. And yeah, there's a lot of people on the website already, even though it's a newer one, right? So this is a newer one. So it's your usual trade your time for money, right? So the more you spend on the platform, the more money you can potentially get. Now, you shouldn't fall into this trap of, you know, just getting more work done. I mean, I don't know, a lot of people are in different situations and I shouldn't be the judge, but you know, if you're just doing it for the grind, stay away from it because in a, in a longer time, over a long period of time, it's gonna be harder for you and you're just gonna be stressed out because I've been there and I've done that and I wouldn't recommend this to anyone. Yes, you can work from home. You can work as much as you want. This is the key information here. Work as much as you want, but please work as much as you need, right? You don't have to work 20 hours a day, right? So yeah, there, I upset it. What is important though, is that no previous experience is needed. So you don't have to have any experience with AI. Why is this important? Well, you are going to get a mentor, right? So there are people there who will meet you and they will just assess your skills. There are going to be a test. I'll show you later on. I'll talk about that. So there's going to be a mentor of yours who's going to teach you how to complete certain jobs, right? It'll depend, of course, on which one of these sections you choose, but you will get a person there who will teach you and help you along the way until you can do it on your own. So if we scroll down, we have some of these typical tasks. For example, you can select which AI chatbot answer is the best, and this is good. And it is needed for you to know something about those topics, right? So as you can see in this task, you will be asked to write a question for an AI chatbot on a topic you're familiar with. You will then get two different answers, and you will need to judge which of the two is better. You'll have to look at various aspects of the answers, such as truthfulness, relevancy, tone, and length. So that is just one example, right? Then there are correct answers from AI chatbots in your field. It's fairly similar to the first one. And the last one is online research. Now in this task, you will be demonstrating the steps needed to do an online research on a specific topic. You will come up with an online research topic and then capture all the steps you take to do this research. So it's like, for example, using DeepSeek and you ask it to search the web with this button here. We don't have to use DeepThink for, for this. So you can practice like this. So it is essentially this job. I want to make a research on why rest is important to people, right? So just like this. And then you will document all of it and then you will ask follow-up questions as well. And that chatbot is 
going to answer to you. Now, you're not going to be working with DeepSeek, but this is just to get you started to show you what this means, because all of these other companies will have their own chatbots and they're going to be in those areas where you excel or you think you have certain knowledge on. So that's in a nutshell. That's the job. Honestly, it's not hard, right? It's not something that is hard to do or, you know, it's just that you have to sit there, you have to focus yourself, concentrate, and you have to invest your time sitting in front of your computer or laptop, whatever, and then you just have to follow these steps. But you will get training, right? This mentor is going to help you. So here it is. What do you have to do? Do the skill match test to get the best suited projects. This is important because this way they will make sure you get the projects which are a match to you. Then you will complete tasks when it suits you, where it suits you. And of course, you will get paid competitive rates on a weekly basis. So the paycheck is on a weekly basis. That is good. I love that. How do you get paid? Payments are made by PayPal and it is the only way as of now to get paid by this company. So until they make something else, PayPal is your only way to go. What if there are no tasks available? It can happen sometimes, but Usually it's not for a long time, right? So most of the times you will not be without a project. Now, speaking of this test, what happens if you fail the test? Well, don't worry. You can retake it after some time has passed. You just have to keep an eye on the dashboard to see if it reappears. So what do you have to do? Click on the get started button, enter in your email address, your password, confirm it once more. And yeah, just make yourself an account and log in. You will have to verify your email, of course. And right off the bat, you will have this test. Let me just increase the size of this. So the following assessment is designed to give you more information about the skills needed to work with us. It also helps us to ensure we have the right type of work for you. Now, this test takes about 45 to 90 minutes to complete. Now, you know it. Don't start it unless you have the next 45 to 90 minutes free time, right? After you complete it, we will review it and let you know if we have the right type of work for you. So let me just start this test. This is my burner account. I just want to show you how this works. So you will start the assessment here. They say refrain from using AI tools like ChatGPT for writing annotations. I think they know if you use it. So I would, you know, stay away from it. Click on the go button here. And as you can see, the first question here is at what age did the father of the person who proposed the right to royalty and perpetuity in the copyright designs 1988 of the United Kingdom die? Now, this is important because the question looks so hard, right? But use Google to research this question and then select the answer below. So what can you do? Just select this, right click on it, search Google for it. You can see it right away here that it is 59. But here down there, you can see William Trippier died at the age 83. So you go back to it, you see there is 59 and there is 83. So now we know that it is in the first one and it is in the fourth one. Now, the best way to do this is always to consider Wikipedia, right? And then just search through it for whichever answer you encounter. And as you can see here, section 301, this is the right to royalties in perpetuity. It is important that you read the question right. And it was proposed by Jim Callahan, right? But the question was, when did his father die? Right, so when did his father die? Click on Jim Callahan and then just some, do some more work. So I found this. I found the biography of James Callahan here. And down there, you can see that it is the second of two children of James Callahan as well. So his father was James Callahan as well. And he died in 21. He was born in 77. So yeah, just do the math. And the answer is 44. Now you have to explain your answer in two, three sentences. You can just copy this where you found it, right? And then of course you proceed to the next question. So the next one is given the following prompt to an AI model, which AI model produces a stronger response? So the prompt is, and you should read this very carefully, write an email to my assistant, Catherine, asking to move my 11 a.m. meeting with Leslie to 4 p.m. 
So you can just go and read right away. So the first one is, Dear Catherine, I need to reschedule by 11 a.m. meeting with Leslie to 4 p.m. today. Please confirm the change. While the second one is, Dear Catherine, kindly move my 11 a.m. meeting with Leslie to 3 p.m. Now, even though this one is more, you know, grammatically correct and is better written, the time is not good. So the first one is good. And then you just scroll down, click on the output one, you explain it once more. We can just go like, the time is not correct in the second output. I just put it like that. And you click on the next button once more. Now the next one is easy. Please write a short story ranging from six to eight sentences about a group of friends on vacation. Set the story in Italy during the summer. Now this one is easy. You can do it on your own and you can see that it's not hard. You just have to sit there and you have to do the research, right? Because after all, you're gonna be checking if the research and all these outputs are good by these AI tools. So yeah, that's it. Wish you good luck and I'll catch you in the next video.